to start? Will I start? You can. <laughs> okay. This is the picture of us on my wedding day on October the 8th, 1949. This is the story of how we really met. You're going to get a laugh out of this. I moved from Maine to Middleborough, Massachusetts. It was the summer of 47. For, no, it the must have to be 46 because I graduated yes. in 47. Yeah, it had to be 46. 46. So I went to work picking apples and pruning trees and stuff like that for my first job there. And With Cliff. Yeah. I went to work with Cliff this one day, came back, he says, how about let's go in and get an ice cream? I said, no, Cliff, I'm too dang dirty. He goes, yeah, come on. So I went in, and guess who was serving ice cream? This one right here. Well, I worked in the pharmacy as a soda jerk. A jerk. <laughs> hey, now wait a minute. But anyway, he sat down with Cliff. And I fed him peach ice cream. That was the ice cream of the month. Let's let's do but, that. But the catch of it all is that I didn't know who she was, but she knew who I was because she worked for the Dr. Smith. They knew and chit-chatted about me all over the place. I had no idea what was going on. So I still had no idea what was going on, but I still don't. <laughs> That night, when I went home, I got a call from Cliff. And Cliff said, would you like to go to the movies on Friday night? I said, Cliff, you know, I like you as a friend, but I really don't want to go out with you. Would you please get the fellow that you brought into the, into the pharmacy, get him to call me, please? <laughs> and Cliff did. He gave me her number, and I called her. And we went out on a date couple of days later. We went to the movies, didn't we? At that time, I was also working at night in the, in the movie in the theater. theater. So we went out to the movies for the first time. After the movies, we went to the Blue Plate restaurant. We had blueberry pie and ice cream, which I fed him again. <laughs> the way she'd been feeding me a lot of stuff ever since. <laughs> Well, I see that you are still surviving. <laughs> Somehow or other, every time we went out on a date somewhere, we wound up at the blue plate at the end anyway. He used to work for a florist, and I would have fresh flowers in the mailbox. So I would have roses, any kind of flowers. They were beautiful. And then... And he used to tell him about the taxi. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to tell him about. Well, I used to get up and ride up to her house in a taxi. And she said, I think we'd better stop having so many days out. This is going to cost you too much. Well, I never told her what had happened. I stopped it at the bend in the road where she couldn't see us and walked the rest of the way. Because <laughs> I was getting a free ride. And I'd have to send funny. him home early enough so he can get the taxi driver before he went off duty. <laughs> no, no. no idea. And no idea. She failed a history class, <laughs> so she had to take it over. So guess who was in the same history class? Me. I didn't have to study. She, she, was taking, <laughs> she was taking a test. And we were taking a test, I should say. <laughs> and I turned around to see what she was doing. And she goes... Puts up four fingers. What's the answer? <laughs> What's the answer to number four? So I tried to signal her, you know, 
and I couldn't get across. So I got up, went over, and I said, number four is this. And turned around and came back and sat down. And the teacher sat there with a mouth wide open. Miss <laughs> Madden was the English uh, history teacher, and she was a first year teacher there. And it just floored her. <laughs> that she used to work in the library. Oh, and I'd get this note with a word about this long. So I'd have to go in after I got that note during class and look up the word. Look up the word. And in the meantime, again, the librarian would give me another big long word to put in mine. And I'd have so to she'd go. have to go look it up. So we learned a few big long words like anti-disestablishmentarianism. <laughs> people who are against the people who are against the rules. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. We used a bicycle together to get out of the cottage and miles and miles of bicycles. That's another thing. We rode bicycles to, to uh, where's my cabin? It's on the Taunton River. Yeah, on the Taunton River. We had some good times in that cabin. I can remember I stole the key to the cottage and it was midwinter. Yeah. Uh, the beginning of John's it. John's brother and his his girlfriend, the four of us, took the took and drove down into the cabin. And I says, you know, before we leave this cabin, it's got to be clean. We may have fun dancing in here right now and having something to eat, but that better be clean because my neck is going to be wrung. So we cleaned up the cottage. We looked outside. It was snowing. And so much snow, too deep, we had to push the car a mile out from where the cottage was. So didn't, the, have, didn't have snow tires on. No, and that, that was ridiculous. <laughs> but we sure had fun. White owl cabins are no longer there. <laughs> I was, think we must have burned them time. down. <laughs> then another, we went to the prom and uh, I'm in my tux, and she's in her dress, and we went down to the Cape, and we're dancing on the uh, flew over the doors over of the, the car. canal, so we could see the boats go by, and that was four o'clock in the morning. So I said, I got to get home. So I drove her home, and then on the way home, I'm undressing while I'm still in the car. I got everything all taken care of. Got out of the car, went in the house, put the keys where Dad would know where they were. He got up the next morning. Drove off of the car, came back that night and says, you know, it's the first time I've had a warm engine when I get in this car. <laughs> One time his father said, you can have the car, but you're going to take your two sisters with you. Take them where they want to go and pick them up. Well, he picked the sisters up while I was still in the car. And, of course, John is the long good night in the back porch. So his oldest sister comes in and she's knocking on the door. She says, Don't you aren't you through saying goodnight yet? <laughs> <laughs> Look at what the uh, pizza ice cream did. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> ice cream. When did I give you a ring? Well, right after I graduated, I went and it was after I had gotten into the service and I gave you the ring. Mm -hmm. And then 40, it was three years. That was 48. Years. But it was three years we were engaged. Technically speaking, yeah. He did get down on his knee and was gave me a, a ring. And uh, my uncle Howard Doty took me into the jewelry store and we looked at rings to make sure what we got was a good ring. He said, I'm going to take you in and we'll get a good ring. Well, I only think I had the ring for about a week. My darling Elaine, would you please be my... <laughs> Not quite, but... No, it was in the living room. And she said no. No, I did not. <laughs> you know better than that. <laughs> Massachusetts at a beautifully big home wedding with at least 200 people in attendance. 
They were, had to open the windows for fresh air. And it was a beautiful fall wedding. The staircase was decorated with fall leaves and urns of mums. It was really, really nice. We were married in front of the picture window with Reverend Paul Q. Brooks, who was the minister who married us. I gave my mother one week to put on a wedding. One week. She looked at me and she says, are you out of your mind? And I says, no, I think there's plenty of time. Something simple. I want a simple wedding. She took me over to Taunton, Mass. We went to a bridal suite and I picked out a nice dress. I got that gown. The lady just, just about finished taking in all the tux and everything. Perfect for the wedding morning. I didn't have to buy a tuxedo because my uniform was He had the uniform. Yeah. It was full of confetti for years oh, afterwards in the pockets. In the, in the pockets of my... <laughs> and they threw rice and it was all through the carpets and in the house. They were vacuuming up rice for years. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, a staircase and I can remember biting my lips coming down the staircase and I'm saying to myself, do I really want to do this? <laughs> so I got down to the end of the, the staircase and the young girl that I chose to play the piano was playing the wedding march. So I says, well, this is it. I think you were already standing there. I was standing there yeah, yeah. when you came down. And that's when the preacher started talking. I don't know if I even heard the words. <laughs> really, I was so excited. <laughs> it, it was funny because during the wedding, the pastor was, sit, was standing looking at us with the window behind him. And I'm looking at these people doing chin-ups on the windowsill, trying to see what's going on. Uh, it made me laugh through the whole wedding. Now, there was another funny part that took place in there because when the pastor said <clears throat> will you take this woman Ruth Ruth Harris to be your wife and I go huh because I always knew her by Elaine and it took a couple of seconds for it to sink in <laughs> so he married that other woman not knowing her for real first I name I forgot to tell him what my first name was <laughs> he never knew <laughs> My name is Ruth. <laughs> so your full name is? Ruth Elaine Green. Be sure and put the E on the end. Of green. Because it is silent like the cue in pool or the pee in swimming. Everything bad happened on the 8th. Okay, her birthday is May 8th. I went into the military on the 8th. I got out of the military on the 8th. <laughs> 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 Yes. And, and I definitely <laughs> and I definitely wouldn't get myself remarried to anybody because that's I wouldn't like to train someone else. He's okay the way he is. <laughs> there are not very many women in this world that all I need to say is, gee, I'd like to have something like that. He'd go get the materials and he'd make it for me. That's our honeymoon breakfast for the day after we were married. White Rabbit, Buzzards Bay, was it? Yep, Buzzards Bay. Buzzards Bay, Mass.